All right, so I am making a uh, Kaizen foam insert for my mobile travel case as an aircraft mechanic. And just wanted to share the technique. I've tried other things. I bought a foam cutter off of Amazon, turned out to be a piece of garbage, fell apart, stopped working. Um, and I've tried a razor knife on another piece. That was also almost impossible to get really precise. So what I've arrived on, believe it or not, is a soldering iron. And this is a soldering iron sold at Harbor Freight. Or not Harbor Freight. Um, sold at Hobby Lobby. And it cost me $30. And I've modified it. As you can see, I've got a few tools already set into the foam. I've got a bunch more that I've got laid out and where I want them to be. Um, and I've got more space to continue working. But what I did was, this is a, the reason the soldering iron is so good, it has a temperature setting. And I found that four is perfect for Kaizen foam. And I removed the soldering tip that it came with, and that right there is a, I don't know, it's the smallest pin punch you get in a normal set. I think it's a 16th. Um, it's secured in there with a set screw using an Allen wrench to set it in the, the uh, soldering iron, but that soldering iron works perfectly. And I'm just going to show the technique that I use. First I start by uh, laying what I want, in this case it's a battery, and then I just take the tip of a scribe and I scratch the foam, scribe the foam around the object, remove it, and right there, that is the outside of the line that I want to fall. I don't want to go beyond that scribe mark because I want this socket to be nice and tight and hold that drill or battery or chuck or whatever it is that I have. As you can see with these tools, they're sitting like that because I've already used that process. And the foam is slightly flexed out, but that's good because that means it's gonna hold them. And they're set as deep as I can go. Now one of the other things I've discovered is um, using this is actually pretty cool because if you look at a side profile, that's it touching the table. So I know I never want to go that deep. I don't want to go beyond the black layer. So if I keep it right to where the taper starts to flare out, I'll never go too deep. It actually works really well. The way you can tell with foam, if you hit the right temperature, Kaizen foam anyways, probably most foams, is I know from working with XPS, which I use on my kayaks, that foam melts, gets flexible and pliable and workable right around 190 degrees. So I wanted to get the tip of this about 190 degrees, and that's what the four has worked out to be. And the way you can tell is the foam will ball up on the tip of this, and this is like a washcloth shot rag that we have. I've been wiping the plastic off on that, and it's you can tell you're at temperature because it wipes off easily. Um, and the nice thing with this is, unlike one of the other foam tools that I tried, that tool, after a while, the tip got kind of flexible and started falling out of it, and that's why it stopped working. Um, this punch, I'm getting nowhere near the temperature that's going to cause that tip to warp or break or bend off, and I can kind of push it a little. Um, because I really don't want to be melting foam beyond where I'm working. So, show how this works here. Goes in, just like a hot knife through butter. And then I just keep pushing it along. And go up to my corners. Just keep following my lines. You know, some of these I gotta kinda make up as I go, but I know what I want. Now this battery is the same diameter as my drill handles, so it's got to be set deep. So I'm going to go all the way to the black layer on this. And this is why I bought it from, I think, Kaizen Source. And I would definitely recommend if you do this, don't buy the all black if you're doing it with this process. Instead, do it with um, a colored layer. I like the red. I want it blue. But they either didn't have it or didn't offer it. I'm not, I don't remember which. Um, but because if it's all black, you've really just got to go by how deep. Now you can see there's some plastic melted onto the tip here from the foam. 
that's perfect. That will wipe off easily, but that's how I can tell I'm right in the temperature I want to be. If it was hotter than that, it would blow the foam out much bigger than it melted around the tip. Colder than that, it won't cut it. It won't it just won't melt way through. It won't melt its way through. So this works out perfectly. Like I said, four. Now I don't know how precise these are. I'm not sure. It's probably just a little potentiometer type of resistor. I don't know. Transistor. No, I'm gonna be transistor. Potentiometer thing, I guess. That's inside of here. I'm sure they're cheap, but I just found that four is what works. So once you cut around your foam, you can try digging it out with your fingers. Now, I've already pulled this loose, but the glue that I have, um, believe it or not, it's just a, a plain old butter knife, would be the best thing. Now this came with a kit, which turned out to be garbage, but this tool is pretty nice anyways for doing it because it, it gets down in and you can pop it out. And then with these layered foams, you just rub that edge of the tip there and it helps break loose the adhesions between the layers and once you've got that dug out of course you need to test fit whatever it is you're trying to fit in there and the tighter the fit the better um, you know, this is going to be my top layer so and I can't set stuff any deeper because of the thickness of the foam versus the thickness of the tools but this right here, I'm not likely to have found it fell out and rolled somewhere in my case when I opened it up after flipping it and rolling it, pulling it, and you know, maybe even shipping it or whatever, um, turning it up on end and then back down flat. Um, this should stay because that there's some resistance to that wanting to stay down in that hole because the foam is pinched in around it. Just showing something quick here where um, just. I went to alternating the ends of my wrenches and that's how much room I save. So at least with craft or the snap on, probably craftsman, any of them, just because the open end is wider, if you alternate ends, you can get a little bit more and I could probably go even a little tighter with gaps like that, but you can get a little bit more in a tighter spot just by doing that. that probably two inches maybe more that's another tool or two right there so when you're laying out things like you know, screwdrivers wrenches whatever your tools you're laying out um, obviously you want to find a fit that works and in this case I like the way these all line up um, and the other thing is when you start cutting you always want to start at the outboard edge at the corner and work your way in because as you cut the whole things change a little bit and it's better to do that than start over here in the middle and work your way out and find out, oh, I wish I had another quarter inch back here. So always work that way as well. So there you go. All of the screwdriving and picks and torque, uh, not torques, um, Allen wrenches, my headlight, uh, mostly stuff that is gonna be seen first when I open my case and quite often the stuff that, in my experience with the type of work that I do, I go for first. And cut into the foam very easily with a hot knife, or in this case, a soldering iron, at variable temperature, and a pin punch instead of a normal tip. And use these tools for digging it out, and that was just actually to make the finger loops shape for some of these. Uh, every single one of them I have a way figured out in order to get them out, like for the ruler. I like this one. Pop it, push, and it pops up. So, just simple things like that. But I really love the way this is going to work out. And I'll show you the case when it's done. I'm laying out these wrenches, and one of the things that is really hard is getting the jaw when I'm just trying to scratch the phone. So what I found here is to actually poke it to make your line and it even helps to kind of define the points of the jaw with an actual poke into the foam like that. For pliers that are uh, spring loaded to open um, in order to reduce the area they're going to take up, 
it's a good idea to tape the handles together while you're tracing. And then afterwards, you can just simply take the tape off and the foam will keep them in place and the fact that they're spring loaded will actually work to lock them into the foam in place.